the exception of uh, our newest AL ALJ, our misguided commissioners who have abandoned their oath of offices in the complete betrayal of the duties that they've undertaken. I want to tell you that I have spent a lifetime representing the good people of California against injustice. When Cesar Chavez died, I was his attorney and defended the Farm Workers Union in Yuma, Arizona. I was an assistant United States attorney and assistant counsel to the United States Senate in charge of organized crime investigation. Here in Orange County, I was the lead counsel for a group of investors who were horribly defrauded in a company called First Pension and was able to recover for them. I am here to tell you tonight that if I were still in the Justice Department, I would accept Senator Boxer's request and convene a special grand jury investigation into the wrongdoing that has been done in this case. You will receive no refund. There is no refund. If you look at section four of the uh, settlement agreement, it says there's a refund mechanism. What you're going to get is a reduction in what Southern Cal Edison says that you owe that you didn't even know you owed. There's no money coming back to you. You're gonna pay $3.3 billion for the plant, the San Onofre plant, and it's not gonna produce a single bit more of electricity. These unfortunate Southern California Edison executives decided to operate the plant without a safety license and it went out. Those steam generators failed two years into the 20 years they were supposed to last and it knocked out the plant. That's a violation of a, sta of a statute. It's known as 5090 under the law. There's a, if you drove your car without a license or a suspended license and you got in an accident, what would happen? You would have to pay for it. That's what the law says. And the reason this is important is under California law, the commission can only impose rates that are reasonably incurred. If you caused expenses to be, or I should say expenses reasonably incurred, if you caused expenses to be unreasonably incurred because you operated the steam generators without a license, you have no legal basis to receive any money in return. Now, in a sense, what Turn is arguing, in a way I kind of agree with, they're saying, look, it's a hopeless cause to ever get the Utilities Commission to ever represent the public interest, so we're just going to join them since you can't keep fighting them because they've been denying Turn intervener compensation over the last several years. Who would select Mr. Peavy? A Southern California Edison lobbyist. Who would select Mr. Peavy, a lobbyist for Southern California Edison, to represent ratepayers when Southern California Edison comes knocking on the door for some more money? You pay, here in the state of California, amongst the highest, in some months and some years, the highest electricity rates. Your rate base, the amount of money that they get to charge returns on, goes up 8% a year, which they brag about to their investors. The rest of the country goes up 4%. If you could see what Southern California Edison is saying to the investors about this settlement and how much money they're making off this settlement, you would be shocked because it would completely, it does completely contradict what they're saying here. That's why the president of Southern California Edison stock shot up $600,000 and he made options, uh, money on his option sales, $600,000 since the settlement went forward. Now, what can we do? You need to recognize that Mr. Peavy has a checkbook and he writes out checks called intervener compensation and it's gonna go to Friends of the Earth and it's gonna go to Turn and it's gonna go to UCAN and on and on and on. And that's why they're here today. They are not here today to say this is a good settlement with a great return, because if they are, this is what I want to ask. How much is the check in the mail going to be that will be arriving at the ratepayer's door? 
And you say, well, why should we get a check? You know why? Because you paid for steam generators when they weren't even operating for two years. And this commission, when the steam generators went out in January of 2012, you know what they did? They delayed the investigation until November. And then they said, we're going to investigate. And you know the first thing they did? They said, but we're going to pause the investigation and we're going to let turn and their people have secret meetings in San Francisco and elsewhere to figure out how to kill the investigation. Now, how many of you would do this? How many of you, if you were going to investigate some wrongdoing, would allow the people who, perpetu who perpetrated the wrongdoing allegedly have two years or more head start before you even started your investigation, and then before you even started your investigation, you come forward and say, oh, we've got a, ra a great deal for you because you're going to get a refund mechanism. The reason I support, the reason I support you, the reason I will not be paid in this case that I've worked on from the get-go is because my commitment and my gratitude for the honor of being allowed to attend the University of California School of Law motivates me every single day, as is my faith. And I cannot bring myself to betray the people of Southern California by going along with something that I know that the people that I represent who are terminally ill, that's the group I represent, Five seconds. terminally ill, and cannot afford to have any more rates. Thank you very much for being here tonight.